There's four things that we all have to remember to do if we're looking to fully and completely heal from a narcissistic abusive relationship. These are things that apply to many different areas of life. Let's get straight into it. Number one, the first thing that you need to do is you need to change your perspective of what is happening. So if you're looking to overcome a narcissistic abusive relationship, you'll think, oh, I've experienced a lot of pain, a lot of betrayal and deception inside of a narcissistic abusive relationship. So I need to go and heal and cure that and deal with my attachment issues and my parents and all the rest of it. Now, to an extent, that is true. To an extent, but it is to a limited extent. If you actually really want to move on, and you really genuinely want to get on with your life and make it so that that person, that relationship just really isn't that relevant anymore. So that you have more joy, more happiness, more hopefulness, more optimism about yourself, about your future and the life you could build in the future. It's a change of perspective away from the therapeutic modality, which is important and does have its place, but to say, okay, it's important. It has its place, but it's limited. Beyond this, I need to change my perspective to one of growing new skills and strengths. This will sound strange. So in modern culture, which is highly psychologized, we tend to think that everything is about the individual and everything is about individual trauma and individual experience and childhood and parents and so on and so forth. All valid. Thank you, uh, Mr. Freud, for that. That's all psychoanalytic theory. It really is all in the lineage of Freud. Uh, whether we like it or not, that's the way it works. But actually what it takes to move our lives forward, our skills and strengths, being happy, being optimistic, being focused on the future is a skill and it is a strength. Once we've changed that perspective and we go, okay, it's important for me to accept my pain and accept my trauma and to grieve and to become emotionally literate and to mature and learn my lessons and move on. Yes, it is. Therapy is important. I actually need to start focusing on the strengths and skills required to pull me forward into a new future. The second thing that we need to become aware of is that in order to create new futures, the skills and the strengths that we develop must be developed with specificity. So that's a, a long sentence. You know, it sounds a little bit complicated. Let's make it very, very simple. If you want happy in future, you must build skill that make happy. You must have the strength that make happy. You want happy, skill happy, strong happy. That's as simple as I can make it. Let's put a little bit of adult prefrontal cortex nuance on that. If you want purpose, let's forget about happiness. As Slavoj Žižek would say, it's a meaningless category. Let's say purpose. You want purpose, you want drive, you want energy, you want inspiration. You want to feel like your life uh, has, uh, has meaning. There's a bit of Jordan Peterson there as well. You've got to give, your, give yourself some meaning, bucko. Find the hardest task. Uh, there is the greatest burden you can carry and then burden yourself with it or whatever our friend from Alberta would say. Something like that. You know, take on the difficult task. Take on the task that requires discipline and strength. And through that, find purpose. And through that, um, that difficulty, that adversity, develop discipline. And then through that, find meaning. Okay. So another way of saying it would be, I want to live a meaningful, purposeful life What's your, what skills and strengths? What do you mean? Everything that you do well is because of a skill or a strength that you've developed. So we want to live a life of meaning. We want to live a life of purpose. What's the strength that we would need there? Well, robustness. We would need to learn to be resilient. We would need to learn to be non-fragile in our approach to life. That would be a strength an attribute that we would have to develop. Another strength that we'd want to develop is consistency of action, discipline, the capacity to be single-minded in our focus. What's the skill? Well, these things also bleed out into skills. What does it mean to be disciplined? Being disciplined is something that you do, and there is a skillful element to discipline. There's a skillful element to consistency as well that we must consider. So it takes us out of the yin, the passive, yin is important. Yin and yang work together. Not enough yin, you have death. Not enough yang, you have death. That's Chinese medicine. No more dynamic movement, no more conflict and push-pull, also death. In Chinese medicine, stillness is not good, nor is, extremity, uh, nor is extremity. They like polarity, but they want the polarities to integrate and work with each other to create. Breathing in, breathing out. Only breathe in, you're gonna die. Only breathe out. 
you know what the result of that is. So too much yen in this model that we're talking about here, passive, past focused, I was in pain, take me into the safe space with my therapist, she holds space for me, I open up in vulnerability, all completely valid, all completely necessary, but it's lacking in yang. Now I must leave the safe cave, the safe yin space, the held space of the therapist's office, and I must live in the world. I become a thing. I become an active agent. The yin is the context. It's the space within which things happen. The yang is the thing. It's the agent. It's the agency to go out there and make things happen. It's about taking action. So this becomes equally important. So our mindset shifts. Therapy, therapy, past, 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 pain, 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 vulnerability, emotional literacy, processing. Okay, got it. Now, what's the flip side of the coin? Yang get out there and start taking action. That's night and day, breathing in, breathing out. We've got the night, that's yin, that's your space, that's your dream time, that's the unconscious, that's Freudian psychoanalytic theory. Now it's time for the day, it's time to take action, it's time to move forward. What are you looking to do? So we have that mindset shift that moves us towards accepting that it's skills and strengths over time that we have to develop. The third thing that you need to understand is that your body and your mind, when traumatized, will automatically focus on the pain. So I bang my hand as I walk through the door. Oh, everything stops. I'm not looking in the environment anymore. I'm not wondering what my toes are doing. I'm not thinking about my breathing. Ah, I, everything is here. My whole consciousness goes here, or if it was my knee, or if it was my elbow. Oh, all my consciousness goes, where's the pain? Look at the pain. Focus on the pain. Why? It's survival. Because if, you're, if, if, if we evolve to ignore pain, and you got a massive pain signal, and you just went, Duh, I'll just keep going, you wouldn't notice that you're under threat, that you've been bitten by something venomous, or you're being slowly eaten by goodness knows what from the depths of the abyss. So... Focusing on pain is important. Focusing, total, clear focus, total focus on pain is important, but that also is the past. So training here, we go, okay, we were in pain. We focused on that pain. We gave that pain space. We processed, we grieved for what was lost. We accepted that it really hurt. We didn't try and deny our way out of it and say, oh, it doesn't really hurt, it doesn't bother me. In our therapeutic yin space, we safely and with boundary vulnerability found the time and the space to say, hey man, hey, that, that hurt, uh, that really hurt me. Wow, that sucked. And then you have a compassionate adult with you saying, yeah, man, that's awful, that really sucks. You've experienced a moral injury, let's talk about that, let's talk about the pain that you're in. Okay, great, got it. Flip side of the coin. The flip side of the coin is future. Now what? Now what? We go to therapy, we read our books, we have this hyper-psychologized culture, this hyper-therapy culture, I love, the, I love the essence of what therapy is. The, the core of, of, of therapy, as we all know it today, whether you like it or not, or you think he's cool or not, is Sigmund Freud. It's psychoanalytic theory. The notion that sitting in a room in a semi-hypnotic state, lying on a, uh, not even sitting, but lying, very submissive, very passive, lying whilst the therapist sits behind you or outside of you. And it's like this conversation that takes place in the unconscious. We don't do that now. It's considered incredibly old fashioned, but we should all give it a go every once in a while. Your therapist out of you, you lie on your back and you say what you're feeling, okay? That's what we've got, past, past, past. But I'm bringing the past to my eyes. The pain, wrong, wrong, bad, pain, past, wrong, wrong, bad, pain, past. And that becomes the strength and the skill that I'm now developing. I'm now conditioning myself to be focused on the past. What must I call forth to consciousness? Your human, your human evolved consciousness doesn't spontaneously call forth images of pleasure and gain and opportunity because in an environment of low resources, uh, where it's a harsh survival, it's more important for your central nervous system to adapt to pain and threat than it is to pleasure and opportunity because pain and threat can really only happen once and then you could die. Sorry, pain and threat carries with it the possibility, the risk that it happens once and your game is over. You're knocked out of the simulation. So pain and threat could be you starve to death right now. Pain and threat could be the saber tooth tiger kills you right now. Pain and threat could be the enemy captures you and you know, chops your limbs off and tosses them into a ravine. It could only happen once. Opportunity and pleasure, of course, has less 
significance to the central nervous system because it can come again and again and again. It doesn't knock you out of the simulation. It doesn't kill you. So it's not as important. So we have to entrain ourselves to do something that not only is against modern culture, it's against our biological instincts. I want to be focused on the future. Yes, it hurt. Yes, that sucked. Yes, I didn't like that. Yes, that's a moral injury. That shouldn't have happened, blah, blah, and so on. Yes, all important, very valid. But shouldn't I spend 50% of my time saying, this is what I do want in the future? It's terrible that on the February the 3rd of 1980 and 162, you told me the terrible lie at 3 p.m. in the afternoon whilst eating the gingerbread slice. You bad person. That's terrible. Let's think about that. Gingerbread, bad, lying, bad. Oh, February 3rd, bad, 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 bad. It already happened. I have no agency in this space. I have no agency. I'm a completely passive observer on the cinema screen of that which already was written. It's already gone. What do I want to see in my future? I want people in my future who tell the truth. I want people in my future who are forthright. I want people in my future who are brave and strong enough that when they're ashamed of something in their lives, they don't lie about it and cover it up. They tell me. And that I am brave and strong enough and kind enough with them in rapport to laugh about our human fragility. Isn't that silly, the thing that I used to do? Isn't that silly, the thing that I did? Yeah, it is. Ha, ha, ha. It's not a condemnation of you as a human being that you did a dumb thing. You say, you should make the weird noise. It goes, ha, ha, ha. And you laugh like this, ha, ha, ha. And you both laugh and then it's over, it's finished. That's what you want in your future. Not people who lie, people who have the strength and the courage to tell the truth about their vulnerabilities and about their failures and about their fragility and the fact that they're human beings. And in that space of fragility and vulnerability and honesty, we can have intimacy. And we can see each other and we can hear each other and we can observe each other in that space and we can create something meaningful. We can create something that sustains us. We can create contact. We can create intimacy. Love can only occur in a safe context in which vulnerability and intimacy is supported and held. These things are fragile. They need safety, they need structure, they need boundaries in order to be able to flourish. That's what you want to create in the future. So you have to deliberately, with strength, determination and skill, skillfulness, cunning, wisdom, kindness, create that in your future over and over and over again. All this emotion, February the 3rd, gingerbread, lying, terrible lies, lies are awful, they had these terrible consequences. Because you lied to me, I did this, and because you lied to me, I lost this, and because you lied, to bad, 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 past, 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 past. All that energy, all that hand-wringing, all that fucking angst and anxiety, it's in a place that you can't touch it. And we have a choice. We don't have to spend all our time there. We could create a rule. I'm not saying that we do. But the rule could be 50% of the time that we just spent over there. We then deliberately spend 50% of the time over here saying, I, th I really think it's a good idea that I create a reality for myself in which I'm associated with people who tell the truth, even when the truth is painful or embarrassing or shameful. In order, the fourth thing that we all need to learn, in order to truly move on, we have to deliberately and consciously build a future. Sounds awkward, sounds hokey, a bit cheesy, a bit life coachy, I know, kind of cringe, but it's the truth. With conscious, deliberate intent, with courage, with a sense of being in congruence with your highest values, you have to deliberately and consciously with emotion, put emotion into it, put emotional content into focusing on the future and then you have the best chance possible of building something for yourself. The strength is the consistency. The skill is the repeated summoning, the repeated visualization, the repeated effort to manifest something that is better than what was in the past. In a sense, this is like light magic, like white magic work. Instead of binding people in darkness, we try and find ways of emancipating ourselves and emancipating the people around us, and we can set ourselves lofty goals the beginning of, the, of a calling into a level of consciousness and a quality of consciousness that would spontaneously bring about the emancipation of all hum humanity. How? It's not that hard. We only really need each other. We only really need our intent. We only really need direct the resources that we already have away from whatever masturbatory, self-indulgent consumer capitalist crap it's currently leaking out on to, leaking onto, gross, Mop that up. Ooh. 
I'm direct it somewhere else. Oh, direct it over there. What do they call that? That's tantra, isn't it? That's that sex magic stuff. So take that sexual, that libidinous life energy and direct it into something that you do actually want. We have a new forward focused, future focused uh, challenge. It begins in a couple of days time. If you want to experience that and you want to work through with me and a community of people who are all on the same page, all trying to do the same thing, and you're prepared to work for around 20 minutes, half an hour every day for 30 days, back to back with consistency, with vulnerability, with openness, with boundaries, with kindness, with politeness, with strong intent and good emotional content, you can hit this link below and you can join us and you can do this 30 day challenge with us that we have coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and for your attention. Be careful where you put those two things. They are your most precious resources. And I look forward to speaking to you again very soon.